Shalom and Bruchim Abayim and welcome. My name is Rabbi Yitzchak Shapira and I'm the founder of Avad Ami Ministries, a Jewish and an Israeli organization that is focused on the restoration of the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua of Nazareth, back to Judaism. And I'm with me in the guest today, Benjamin Berton. Benjamin, how are you doing? Good, told me out. Good, good, good to see you. Do you know who said, Ani ma'amin be'emuna shlema? שכל דברי הנביאים הם מתה? Do you know? The Rambam. Which means what? That uh, all the words of the prophets are true. All the, do you believe, I believe that all with, the... I believe with perfect faith. Well, interestingly enough, in this program, share a lot and shuvot, questions and answers. We're going to look at some of the words of the prophets. In the recent book, The Return of the Kosher Pig, an incredible prophecy was brought forward by Zachariah that have to deal with the coming of the Messiah, who will be called by uh, uh, names like stones and mountains. And that's why we call this, this episode Mountains and Plains, because the Messiah actually be called by both names, mountain and plain, as we're going to learn. Uh, Rabbi Israel Blumenthal, interestingly, brought a serious objection and again, we, we must state that we take any kind of manipulation of the Hebrew text, uh, any kind of tw twisting. Uh, Messianic Jews always being, uh, 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 being, being guilty of right. twisting and shouting right. and manipulating the text. And uh, in this particular objection, Israel Blumenthal brought yet another, and what I believe is a desperate attempt to deviate from the literal text of, uh, of Zechariah 4 uh, to point that I have uh, mistranslated some text, which, by the way, is not true, as we're going to learn together. Let's look today together at the objection first. And it says the following. It says, on page 87, Shapira lists the Metzudat David as one of the commentators who understand the great mountain of Zechariah 4.7 as a reference to the Messiah. In fact, this commentator understood that great mountain as a reference to Gog, the arch enemy of the Messiah. Shapira actually puts the Hebrew words of the Metzodo David in the footnote so that anyone who reads Hebrew can see that his translation is off the mark. Well, the question is, is number one, the first question we need to answer is, A, is my transla translation is off the mark? B, who Zechariah 4.7 is speaking of? And C, what Rabbi Altusler really says? I think the appropriate place to start, and, and again, let me state, up front, I put the Hebrew there that everybody can see the truth about this verse and how the way I translate it. In many cases, in resources that are not available in Hebrew, I paraphrase it to bring the port forward. The real question we need to ask, have I manipulated Rabbi Altusler's whole words in Mitzudat David to bring some point uh, that is not in there in the case? Hardly so. This objection and this mistranslation is a figment of Rabbi Blumenthal imagination. Let us first of all look at Zechariah 4, 4, 6 and 4, 7. And even before we look at this, it's important to bring the context of Zechariah 4. It's, uh, it's uh, with Zerubbabel who tasked with this heavenly task uh, to build the wall of Jerusalem. That's right. They're coming out of, out of exile. They're rebuilding Jerusalem and, and ultimately uh, this is setting the stage for... Uh, for what's, what's going to happen. And then the angel appears to him, the angel of the Lord, and he gives him this, this, this famous verse. He says, not by might and not by, by power, but by my spirit. Rabbi David Kimchi, by the way, do you know how he understood uh, might and power? He said, the might is what you can attain with your own hands. Power is what you can attain in community. But ultimately, the spirit is only a spirit of grace that God himself breathed life into this building, incredible uh, building project. But actually, do you know what the Targum says, Ben, on this particular verse, on the might, power, and spirit? It's the Mimra. The Mimra. So it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Messiah, the Mimra, that all things are going to get built at the end of the day. But let us look specifically on verse Zechariah 4, 6, and 4, 7 as we uh, approach and look at these particular objections. Let us take it. It says, Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the top stone with shoutings of grace, grace, unto it. Uh, interesting, very interesting. The gist of the argument in the book, by the way, it's important to understand that uh, Rabbi Blumenthal take one verse out of a context, and the context of this particular chapter in the return of the 
kosher pig has to do with the ranking of the Messiah, mm -hmm. okay? The, the level of the Messiah, let's say in comparison to Moses or contemporary to Abraham, mm -hmm. the sages had quite a lot to say about this level and we're going to look at that right. together uh, today. But the first question that we must ask is, who is this great mountain? The right. point that I have brought from Metsuda David, that the great mountain is actually the Messiah himself. That right. is the entire point of the translation in the return of a kosher pig. As a matter of fact, here's what I wrote. Here's the way I, I translate Metsudot. Let's look at that uh, together. This is what I wrote on page 87. Rabbi David Altushler, Altushler. The, Altushler, the writer of the Metsudat David, writes in the following in connection with Zechariah 4.7. In the words, who are you, O great mountain? The words, who are you, Mieta, are suggesting what strength is in you, King Gog, that you think that you can stand up to the great mountain. In other words, who can stand before Messiah? This was my translation, which I paraphrased. And notice that I wrote in the brackets the word King you have Gog. in the brackets, King Gog. Yeah, and literally the Hebrew, let's put it up again. Let's put it up again. It says here in the literal Hebrew, Mi ata har who are you great mammal? On King Gog it, it says that, as it want to say about King Gog. What strength there is, you think, in King Gog? the anti-Mashiach, that you can stand. Let's stay there. Let's stay on this slide for a moment. And, and then it says, you cannot stand. You cannot stand in front of the Messiah. Mm. So the literal translation of this verse, I could have translated it like this, because this is the literal, as I just explained. It says, on King Gog, it is stated, who are you, great mountain? What so there is in you? that you think that you are the great mountain. Who can stand in front of King Messiah? Mm. Mm. That is the literal translation. I, I firmly believe that uh, Rabbi Blumenthal is, is nitpicking here and missing. It's, it's like you're going, uh, how you say it in English? You go into uh, the forest and you don't see... Uh, uh, there's, you can't see the forest because there's too many trees too in Too many the trees. I the, mean, you put King Gog in the bracket, so that right there is uh, pretty much... Pretty much re recap it. The anti-Mashiach in this case, right. you will think that he is greater than the Messiah, okay? Right. But who is truly the great mountain? Well, I think the answer is irrefutable from uh, Midrash Tanchuma. Which we have right here. Yeah, Midrash Tanchuma that we have here. And uh, written by Tanchuma Bar Abba, but it's really canonized. Those Midrashim have been known to our people <coughs> in the... Uh, Orally in the first and the second uh, uh, century without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. And in this particular case, Midrash and Chuma clearly tell us in connection to Zechariah 4, 4, 6 and 4, 7, mm -hmm. who is the great uh, mountain. Let us uh, look at the passage clearly. What it says in Midrash Tanchuma, we are reading straight, straight from the Midrash. By the way, if you want the Hebrew, you can go to the article and look at the Hebrew. Let us look together. It says, and this is from Midrash Tanchuma, Toldot 14. It says, a song of ascents, I will lift my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come from? Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain. This refers to Mashiach, or Messiah, the son of David. And why is he called great? Because he is greater than the patriarchs. As it is written, behold, my servant shall deal wisely. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. He shall be more exalted than Abraham, of whom it is said, I lift up my hand, reflecting the same Hebrew word, vroom hamrimoti. He shall be more extolled than Moses, of whom it is said, as the nursling father bears the nursling child. It's almost inconceivable to think this translation from Midrash Tanchuma. They are acknowledging that the Messiah will be greater <laughs> Then Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses even. Yes. And the angel, the ministering, Mrs. Angel. And the key is that they connected Isaiah 4 mm. to Isaiah 52, 13, actually. They make the, 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 the connection. This is not a connection that is some sort of a messianic plot or messianic agenda. No, this, it's right here. It's very clear. This refers to Mashiach, son of David. Why does it call him Great Mountain? Because he is greater than the patriarch. So, in essence, this translation... Ben that I offered in Metzudot is exactly on the mark. It's 
it's it, the, the heart of the issue, that the Messiah is greater. As a matter of fact, there was a, a rabbi in the 13th century, uh, an opponent, a, a bitter opponent to the Rambam by the name of Rabbi Yachi, that had to continue, and he actually had to say even more to expound upon this understanding. Let's look at Rabbi uh, Yachi's understanding of this passage together. And he said the following. The Mashiach will be higher than Avraham because Avraham possessed nothing except 70 souls. But King Mashiach will turn all to the service of God, i.e. the whole world. More exalted than Moshe, for Moshe drew but a single nation to the service of God. But King Mashiach will bring his service to many peoples and will restore peace between many kings. Loftier than the ministering angels, for King Mashiach's power will extend even over the heavens, whose movements he will miraculously change. I, I got to stop and talk about this last part. He will change the heavens. That's mean that he will be over the, the forces of nature. This is amazing. And matter of fact, you know, when they fell to Yeshua of Nazareth, when they told him, when he quieted the sea, you know, they say, right. who is it that the forces of the, 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 the forces of nature listen to him? Right. Because, you know, there is a scripture that says that the Mashiach will bring roga, regia, to the seas, in the, in the Psalms. It will bring calmness and peacefulness to the seas. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that the Mashiach, it's hard to, anybody that holds a position that he is just a human being, just a regular, ordinary Joe, yeah, going to have a big problem with this. It's going to be a big surprise with this. Because the, the, the Rabbi Yachir, he said he's great mountain because he's elevated and he's even controlled the forces of nature. Right. I think the Sephorno says that he is like a star that crosses from one end of the heavens to the other. He's incredible. Yeah. Interestingly enough, Rabbi Blumenthal continued with his objection. And I believe this is... It's based on, on desperation to recognize the truth about the Jewish Messiah. He is greater than Abraham. He's greater, by the way, he's greater also from the Adam Kadmon, the first, the first man before sin one entered the world. Mm. He is even greater than him. And uh, uh, let us look, because Rabbi Blumenthal continues the same passage. Again, it's, it's important not to take things out of context. Right. He, he's, he's taking one paragraph completely out of context. But let us look at what he says, because again, he claimed that I mistranslated something. He's making some real false assumptions. Let us look at what Rabbi Blumenthal is saying. He says that, he said on page 88, which is the next page in the book, Shapira quotes a Barbanel comments, again, on Zechariah 4, 7, as it's applied to Isaiah 2, to the Mashiach. The Barbanel is actually quoting from Isaiah 11. <coughs> Here too, Shapira make a mistake, he says, he seems to be rooted in his trust to the secondary sources. It seems that he doesn't feel the responsibility to check his quotation in the original sources. Furthermore, the mere fact of Shapira quotes <laughs> about Manel in an attempt to establish the concept of the divinity of Messiah is horrifying. <laughs> the Barbanel devoted much of his life work to refuting the very idea that Shapira is advancing. Well, first of all, let me put this to bed. I actually did read the Barbanel in the original context, in the original book, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And I, we'll see if what I said was correct or incorrect. That's, that's number one. Uh, the assumption that is being made here uh, by Rabbi Blumenthal is false in its core. I was not relying on secondary secondary resource resources at all. As a matter of fact, I was co quoting in this in this case. I was uh, quoting an article from Nechama Leibovitch, okay, on this this, and also going to the original resource because they say the same thing in the book. I I reference Nech Nechama Leibovitch in article of Sichot, and if you go to the article, you can see this. So if he wants to have a dispute, have a dispute with Nechama Leibovitz and not with me. Again, this is a argument against Judaism itself, because in Judaism in, in its core, uh, there was no dependencies. Actually, let us look specifically at what I say on the book, 
because I would like to bring, here is the original text from Rabbi Abarbanel. This is the or, original uh, uh, text. And I, I said the following in the translation. The word, who are you, great Bavel for Zerubel, that should become plain, implying, who are you, King Mashiach? Again, it, it's the same point, Ben, we have seen before. The mountain in front of the room will be the Messiah. The Messiah will become a plain because he will strengthen all the nation and guide them in righteousness as it is written in Isaiah 2, and he shall judge between the nation. That's, that's incredible. I mean, I could read that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, well, it's making the point here. There are a couple of points. Let, let's, let us organize. First of all, Rabbi Blumenthal says that I misquoted it, and it's not pointing to Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 2. It's quoting, it's quoting actually referencing to Isaiah 11. Let us bring the reference of it up. It's actually quoting both. At the top it says, <coughs> as Isaiah said, that is Isaiah 11.1. Mm. But in the context of Zechariah 4.7, as, as the highlight text, it says that the Messiah will make humanity. You know, it says in the mountain, that the mountain will become a plane. Uh, the mountain will become a plane. There's a play on word here in the mm. Hebrew. Mm. You know, the, the Hebrew word mishor mm. comes from the word yashar. Mm. Which mean what? Straight. Or Straight or blameless. The Messiah will make humanity blameless and then will judge them in in, in circle of righteousness. Matter of fact, Barbanel, if you read the next page, Rabbi Blumenthal, I think I just read one page. It's wrong. It's actually, I read more than one page. He continued to connect this Messiah to Psalm 118, 22, mm. talking about the Rosh Pinam, we will deal with that in the next, in the next couple, uh, couple of statements. But Mashiach will make humanity plain. It will make humanity blameless. He will make us a Mishor. Mm. It is clear that he's quoting Isaiah 2 and Isaiah 11. But... So on Isaiah 11... Yeah, let's talk about let's Isaiah talk 11 about for a second. If he wants to contend that he's not talking about Isaiah 2 which is clearly does, but he's talking about Isaiah 11. Well, there is a, a situation there, there as well. Psikata uh, Rabati, I have to say a lot, or Psikata Rabati, I have to say a lot about Isaiah 11 as well. It, it really does. It says something quite, a, quite yeah, let, let, let us look at that, Ben. This is in Pisca 33, and it says... You will find that at the very beginning of creation of the world, the King Messiah had already come into being, for he existed in God's thought even before the world was created. Of his existence, Scripture says, and there shall come forth a shoot of the stock of Jesse. It does not say, and there shall come forth, but it rather says, and there came forth, implying that the, stock, the shoot of the stock of Jesse had already come forth. Ah, this is interesting. The Hebrew, the word there, to came out, the word in the, in the context, because let's just get back to the word of God for a moment. Right. The word is, is yatsa. Right. Right? Which means, the yatsa, it means that the Messiah is already, the spirit is already in the world, because the rabbi explained to us, his origins are from the beginning of time, like uh, Psalm 72, 17. So, for an English speaker, what the Isaiah 11 is saying is that it's in the past tense that he already came forth, and yeah. not that he will come in the future tense, but he has already come. Yeah. Yes. In, yes. A, in a sense. It's, it's because the spirit of Messiah, again, Rashi tells us, was there from the beginning of time. Right. Genesis, they actually connected it to Genesis 1 too, that says that the spirit of Messiah was there. There is interesting because the word Yatsai does not, it's not the same word as the word Nivra. A creation. Right. It wasn't created because the Messiah is not a created being. Mm. He was there. Sachim tell us he was there. Seven things were created before the, the beginning of the world. The name of the Mashiach was. Lifnek Yeah, Lifnek He was there. Right. So again, if, we, if he wants to argue, Rabbi Blumenthal, that Isaiah, it's quoting Isaiah 11 and I mistranslated, which I clearly have not, then there is a bigger problem. Because the Messiah was already there. His spirit was already there. Let me look at the conclusion of what I said in the book. A matter of fact, in Rabbi Barbanel, Ben, I said the following. What a fascinating statement by Rabbi Barbanel. 
about the nature of Messiah, who connected, right? He connected Isaiah 11, Zechariah 4, 7, this great mountain, you know, to Isaiah 52, 13, and, and I says about Messiah in his role. The Messiah is not only identified as a great mountain, but the Messiah himself will become a plain, according to the text of Zechariah 4, 7. The word plain in Hebrew is Mishor, derived from the word Yashar which literally is translated as straight or blameless. Rabbi Barnumnei is stating that the Messiah will be the one who strengthens the nation. One again, once again, we must raise a question, and this is the point, based on the same sages' understanding. How can a mere human strengthen the nations and humanity as a whole? That is the bottom line, friends. It's a this, big task. this is a big task. I don't know any person that can, you know, even in Israel, we say to just 20 opinions. Just to straighten all the Jewish nation will be miraculous. But think about straightening straight, the entire world. Yeah. The entire in world. Humanity. Bring the entire world to God. In humanity. I did not say in the text that the Barbanel believed in a divine Messiah. I simply connected the dots. If this is true and everything that the Barbanel says is true, and Metsudata David and Midrash Tan Huma, then the question I would like to leave you with today is this. Think about this. What human being will possess the forces of heaven, as it says, to move heaven and earth to make all of humanity blameless and righteous before of God? What kind of human being will have this possession? The answer is not a, no human being. It will be Hashem himself. Only Hashem himself can do that. Amen? Amen. We wish you blessing, call to brachot in the name of our master. By the way, if you disagree with us or agree with us, you have questions, objections, you want to find out more about Yeshua, the king of our people, contact us and we will gladly reason with you. Call to and lead